Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Hyperion Hub, your meeting place for all things Disney. Now your hosts. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first edition of the Hyperion Hub. I'm John Alois, and I'm joined by co-host Sean Degenhart. Hi, John. And John Redling Schaefer. Hello there. Thanks for joining us on the first edition of our podcast, the Hyperion Hub. I thought we could start off by introducing ourselves, go around the table, and find out a little bit about our background. And let's start off with Mr. Music on my left, Sean Degenhardt. Tell us a little bit about your history, what you love about the, the company, and a little bit about your background as well. Yeah. Well, as John said, I am a musician, so I love Disney music, and that's kind of my angle where I'm coming into this podcast with. Um, I only went to Disney World once when I was a kid, and that was in high school. Our choir went down for a trip and sang for the Magic Music Days. When my daughters were six and three, we took them to Disney World for the first time. We came across some free tickets and didn't turn them down, you know, all that kind of thing. And when I, when we were there, it was truly a magical experience. Looking at it through a parent's and an adult's eyes and as a musician, looking at all the detail and the, their customer service and the way they do things. And it was just truly magical. That's the only word I can think of. The last day we were at Magic Kingdom and we got picked to be the first family in the park. An awesome, awesome experience. Um, they took us up to the train station. We got to meet the mayor and all of the other cast members on Main Street. Brought us out on the train, standing next to Mickey, holding our girls, waving hello to the throngs outside of the gates. It was just unbelievable. Did that spoil you at all? Did you think yes, that was going to happen? Told, you know, Anna and I were crying practically, <laughs> and the girls, who you know, their first time when they were little, they had no idea that this is not usually what happens. So we befriended that cast member. Her name was Awilda. She had been at the park since it opened, and we just got back from Disney World a couple weeks ago, and she has since retired, so we were kind of sad to lose touch with her, but we'd frequently say hi to her whenever we'd go back. But just the way they do things, I started reading every book I could find on Disney's customer service and guest experience and, you know, the John Hench art books and all those kind of things, just kind of sucking it all up and applying it to what we do in our own concerts. Awesome. That's awesome. All right, let's switch over here to Mr. Redling Schaefer. You are a uh, fellow Disney Vacation Club member. I am. What brings you here today? Uh, what brings me here is a family tradition of enjoying the Disney experience. So I was a typical Midwestern kid. Families went to Walt Disney World. So at some point, my parents saved up enough money, and off we went on beautiful Ozark Airlines from Peoria, uh, not even International Airport at that point, <laughs> uh, connected through uh, TWA in St. Louis. I'm dating myself, but that's how we did it. And we went twice in the mid to late 80s. Mom, also in the music world, um, was in very quickly instilling in me early on, the, the, not just the music, but the movies. And so as the tourist family, yeah, we went twice. We stayed at the Contemporary, where they actually had metal keys at that wow. point. And I actually returned that about a year or two ago, because Mom didn't steal it. I'm going to put that out there. <laughs> um, but sure enough, she found it, you know, two or three billfolds later. It was tucked in the back, so I had to return the Contemporary <laughs> key, or we would have been fine. Um, and then we also stayed at what was then the Golf Resort, which became Shades of Green. Hmm. Um, and so those were our two experiences. Fast forward 30 years uh, just about and we had four children with my beautiful wife and we thought well we should probably go and we did um, the six of us along with my mom and dad in October of 2013 and we stayed at Port Orleans my wife walked through the lobby um, and saw this Disney Vacation Club sign and <laughs> I think by accident if she would admit it um, and talked to the person for a little bit came back we were the opinion that we would go maybe every four or five years um, as a family to go visit. And within six months, we had purchased Disney Vacation <laughs> Club, and I'm sure we'll talk about that in great detail as we move forward through our history here. Um, but in the end, we have been multiple times since 2014 a year, uh, occasionally two or three times a year. We were annual pass holders for a while. So my connection to the company is pretty recent. I, I have then done everything I can to read up, to study, to see how wonderful you know, Walt's vision mm -hmm. was, is, 
and will continue to be. I mean, we all have, I'm sure, our subscribers to Disney Plus, and we've watched mm-hmm. our Imagineers already. Um, and so it is a kind of a late bloomer to the scene. Yeah. You know, you have that wonderful history, um, but we were kind of the new guys to the table, and we've never looked back. It's exciting. That's awesome. Yeah. I grew up, and I, by the way, my first trip to Walt Disney World, we stayed at the golf resort as well. So. Outstanding. Yeah. Uh, what I, room was it? I, that I don't know, <laughs> and I don't have the key. But we, um, <laughs> uh, I grew up, uh, my parents were huge Disney fans. My grandparents were as well. My dad wanted to go to Disneyland, you know, when he was little. They couldn't go from Chicago to out to California. Um, so uh, later on in life, he actually got to bring his parents to Disneyland with myself. But um, they, you know, they loved watching uh, The Wonderful World of Disney and, and all the TV shows. And my mom was a big uh, Mouseketeer fan. And uh, they went by themselves in 1972, something like that. And then a few years later, I went and um, went, got to go to Disneyland also in the, in the 70s. In the 80s, we drove down. That was the, you know, the cross-country trip for us. And that happened to be the, the last time I'd gone until my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife, called me on a February cold night in 2000. And... Um, you know, here in the Midwest, we go through the, those winter blues can be mm-hmm. real. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so she said, why don't we go to Walt Disney World? And we did uh, in 2000. Two years later, I flew her back down and got engaged in front of the castle. Uh, the next year, we um, spent part of our honeymoon there. And, um, you know, I also took a cruise, took my three-month-old son to Disneyland, took my one-year-old daughter back to Walt Disney World, and we haven't looked back. We're also Disney Vacation Club members. But what really intrigued me about the company was as I was growing up and I would hear my dad talk about the Walt show, and, and we would watch on Sunday nights, even in the 80s, when uh, uh, Eisner uh, mm-hmm. hosted them, um, I just loved learning about the history of the company. And I am, I am a kind of a student of Disney history. I've been to a, a bunch of locations. Marceline, I've been to his uh, Laughagram studio in Kansas City. I just love to explore as much as I can about the company. And that includes everything. I'm a huge Marvel fan. I'm a huge Disney or uh, Star Wars fan. Of course, Pixar and Muppets. For me, the most... Uh, exciting aspect of the Disney company is its ability to uh, be the ultimate storyteller. I love to hear Mm -hmm. the stories that they have to tell. And the ability to uh, tell a great story goes back all the way to its foundation. And that's what Walt wanted to do. And in my opinion, it's evolved over the years. And in some ways, it's gotten better. Uh, In some ways, it maybe hasn't topped some of those classics. But that for me is what I love about the Disney company. It's so diverse. Uh, first of all, they provide a wide variety of genres, and uh, those can include things that I love, like sci fi and uh, heroes, but it also can include documentaries and animation. And that for me has always been so appealing about the uh, Disney company. I love the way they tell stories. In their theme parks, in the details, in their Disney stores, it's all very interesting for me. And that's what we want to bring to you, the listeners. This is what we hope this podcast becomes. We hope that you drive us. Uh, You tell us what you like. We're going to have interviews. We're going to talk to people who are connected to the Disney company. We're going to share our stories, and you're going to learn more about us as Disney fans. But this was the whole reason for getting us together, I think, is is to uh, explore and learn more about this company because it really has an impact on my daily life and I think on your guys mm-hmm. too. So Absolutely. where we want to go with this show and what we want to bring to you guys, the listeners, is we want to uh, we want to talk to other Disney fans. We want to talk to other podcasters and cast members and find out what their Disney stories are. Yeah, everything Disney does is a story. 
whether it's TV or movies or parks or it doesn't matter. Every story is king. And that's really what we want to explore. We'll look at music, um, maybe talk about some Sherman Brothers stuff. We want to talk about Mary Blair color schemes, um, John Hinch designs, every Herb Ryman's sketch, you know, of Disneyland, everything, anything and everything is what we'll be covering. I think as we learn more about each other um, and find out what our backgrounds are, you mentioned the Sherman Brothers. There's actually an interesting story that you yeah, have. Yeah, we have that, a connection. You know, we'll be able to uh, hear some of those things as well as we move forward. I also like the idea of not just sharing our own stories, but as you said, John, listening to what others want to tell us, whether it be a cast member, whether it be a listener, uh, about their experiences and what this has meant to them and their families. Because in the end, I have grown closer to my family mm -hmm. because of this company, because of this man. And in the end, we really owe quite a bit. Why are the three of us sitting here? And so the historical perspective and its you know, trend toward present day and the joy that it brings to each of us as individuals, but the joy, as you said earlier too, Sean, about the, you know, looking at the parks and other Disney things through the eyes of our children. And so that's what I'm looking forward to is not just our own personal experiences, but those connections that the cast members and, and our listeners can share with us, because to me, it's just going to, you know, reemphasize and reinvigorate the passion we have mm -hmm. for the company. Yeah, so thanks again for joining us on this week's premiere episode of the Hyperion Hub. Next week, we're going to be talking about Disney without kids. We just talked about the importance of the family and those family trips, building memories. But sometimes mom and dad just want to get away and enjoy a little Disney time without them. So that's what we're going to be discussing next week on the Hyperion Hub. Thanks, guys. We're glad you could join us. We'd love to hear from you. You can email or send us a recorded audio message at podcast at the hyperionhub.com. Find us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. The Hyperion Hub is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or its subsidiaries. We'll meet you next time at the Hyperion Hub.